Hi guys and welcome in the second video of this series, the scientific backtesting guide. Again, each video of this YouTube playlist will be associated to a blog post from my blog, which will help you if you just prefer to read, then watch the video, or even if you have some questions, some remark, some interrogation about what I'm saying in the video, you can take a look to the article because even if I'm explaining the same thing, I will not explain them always on the same way. And as always, this video is sponsored by the AlphaQuant program, a quant program that combines e-learning videos, 7 day of a 7 support and real life monthly project for quant. So if you are interested by that, just take a look in the description. First, now we need to explain what's the definition of a backtest and what the goals of a backtest. Because even if you have already taken a look to a backtest, you need to understand that 99% of the backtests are wrong. And the goal of this series is to explain you why they are wrong and also how to do a proper backtest for your trading strategies. So the goal is pretty simple. You want to understand the behavior of your trading strategy. Tell like that, it seems pretty easy, but trust me, it's really not. You need to understand each strength and each weaknesses of this trading strategy to be sure that you can put it in live trading. And more precisely, you need to minimize the odds to lose money in live trading, putting a strategy that in the backtest you qualified it as good. And that's the main point here. You need to be as hard as possible. You will only select one strategy of a 100 maybe, but you need that this strategy is good. If you have a good strategy and you don't select it because of your backtest, it's not so hard because you will not lose money, you will not earn money. But if you take a wrong strategy from your backtest because you did just an historical path simulation, for example, and you put it in live trading, the odds to lose money are very, very high. So the goal is to be as hard as possible in the backtest in order to put only the best trading strategies in live trading. For now, most of you use only a cumulative return chart, a drawdown chart, and some metrics. And sorry, but it's really not enough. And that's the goal of this playlist, explaining what you should use. A good basis, but it's definitely not enough. Really, I insist on this point. But the question is why it is not enough. Because backtesting is really an art. I can take the same strategy than you. I can take the same data than you. And I can say that this strategy is not good. But if you are using only a standard backtest, just applying your strategy to the historical data, you will miss a lot of things. You will miss the fact that prices are random. It means that the historical price is only one path that the past could be. And that's so important to understand. And that's really, in my opinion, the main point that a lot of people, and trust me, 99% of the people don't understand. If the prices are random, you need to integrate that in your backtesting through robustness test, Monte Carlo simulation, and so on. You can integrate, what does it mean stock prices are random? It means that you can't predict the next value of the price, but the price follow a certain distribution. So it means that you know that the future price will be in a specific range, but you can't say that it will be this value, $2.15, for example. You can't do that. Moreover, the past could be always different. For example, here, I just gave the example of the COVID-19. Maybe if the COVID-19 has never been discovered, so we didn't suffer from this crisis from the COVID-19. If the CEO of Binance didn't talk about the FTX solvability, maybe we didn't suffer so much in the cryptocurrency sphere from this news. So it's really important to understand that each event in the past could be different. And so it means that the historical data could be different. So you need to make different simulation, taking into account the historical data distribution to apply your trading strategy, not on a single path, so the historical data, but on a multiple 
path. And that's the next step. Understand the difference between the single path backtest and the multiple path backtest. It's pretty easy to understand. The simple path backtest is what you can see anywhere. You want to copy trade someone on the internet, it will give you an amazing backtest, but this backtest is overfitted. And the problem of the simple path backtesting is that the odds to have an overfitting problem is so high. And that's really the main problem because overfitting is pretty easy to understand. You will have an amazing backtest and you will lose money in live trading. That's basically overfitting. So if you have overfitting problem, it means that the backtest could be as amazing as you want, you will lose money in live trading. So the goal is to quantify all the metrics that you are using, sharp ratio, drawdown, on different simulations. And we'll see many methods to do that in this playlist. But the goal is that after that, you will have a possible distribution of the metric that you can have in live trading. And not only one value, because the problem that we will detail in the next video is that as you can see here, this graph seems really good. This backtest can give us a very good strategy, but this simple backtest is associated to this multiple path backtesting. And here, as we can see, we have a probability of overfitting higher than 50%, which is huge. It means that when you are following the same distribution than the historical data and you're taking several possible paths, your results are very bad. But this simple path backtesting seems really good. And that's the lucky randomness problem that we'll detail in the next video. But to resume, all you need to understand from this video is that the goal of the backtesting is not to say okay to all the training strategies, is to minimize the odds that when you are saying okay to a strategies from the backtest, okay, using your backtest analysis, the odds to lose money in live trading are very, very low. And to do that, you need to apply as much test as possible that we will detail in the next video.